We are here with another Beyond Baseball Shorts, and I'm very excited for the guest that we have today. We have Matt Gage, a left-handed pitcher with the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, made his Major League debut last year, um, and just an incredible journey that we'll really dive into. But Matt, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Um, so just for the viewers who don't know you, let just dive into your journey kind of in professional baseball, how it got started, some of your playing days at Siena College as well. Yeah, so I uh, was actually grew up outside of Cooperstown in upstate New York. Uh, ended up getting a scholarship offer from Siena. Uh, ended up taking that. Went there, played there for three years. Got to pitch in the Cape Cod Summer League. So I was uh, it was a lot of fun. And got to see some parts of uh, the country that I never saw before uh, early on. And then uh, luckily enough, I was drafted in the tenth round by the Giants in 2014. Uh, Went to the AZL there, then went to Augusta, uh, which was low A at the time, in 15, got promoted to double A, uh, about two months left of the season, um, pitched okay there, ended up getting a double A spot in 15, 16, 17, and 18, uh, so spent a lot of time in Richmond, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, went to triple A in Sacramento in 17 and 18 with the Giants, uh, ended up getting released by the Giants um after we had some disagreements about my elbow mm. and then uh i went over to the mets had the mets team doctor lick me in uh, new york city with uh, dr Alchek. he said i had a bone spur took a bone spur out was really good to go uh in 19 signed with the rockies uh for spring training and went through camp with the rockies did pretty decent it was okay um and then at the end of the spring training the rockies brought me in and said hey uh, you have an offer to go to Mexico City and play right away down there and make some good money. So I technically got bought out, and so I got released, but went down to Mexico City, played down there for a summer. It was a lot of fun. It was all about winning at that point um, because it was just one of those things is like with the minor leagues, it's it's more about development. And and in international baseball, it's win today. Yeah. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, but it's win today. So that was kind of the first part of opening my eyes to that. And then uh, 20, I was back down there in spring training. I was going to pitch for Team USA in the qualifier. Ended up COVID, you know, two weeks. Yeah. Go home for two weeks and be, we'll be back. That didn't happen. <laughs> Ended up playing independent ball in Texas in Sugar Land in the, the Constellation Energy League. Played winter ball that winter. Came back, threw in front of a Diamondback scout the, twice. They signed me after the second time. A couple of days after that, went through the – Diamondbacks camp was okay. Went to double A to start. Was only there for two and a half weeks, three weeks. Went to Reno. Never got my chance with the with, with the Diamondbacks. It was just an organization thing where when you're at the bottom, it's they're, they want to see their guys, and I was an extra guy. And it's part of the business, no big deal. Mm -hmm. So then going into free agency this year, it was one of those things is, uh, well, who, who do you want to pitch for? And uh, kind of you can kind of pick. And it was kind of a little different. And as soon as free agency opened up in the minor league level, it was phone calls and phone calls from my agent. And it was, it was wild. That's it was the crazy. most fun I've, I've, I've had <laughs> in free agency. It's usually I wait around till about January, February to finally try to get a job. And it was before Thanksgiving, I signed a contract to go to the Blue Jays camp and a big league invite. So being able to do that the first time was, was great. Went to camp, got a couple innings uh, in the big league side uh, just because it was a shortened camp. Then uh, went to AAA, threw well in Buffalo, and finally ultimately got my chance and just kind of bounced up and down with the Blue Jays, had another bone spur kind of pop up during the season, ended up getting that taken out after the season was over, and I'm kind of rehabbing that back now. But uh, as of right now, I'm still with the Blue Jays. I'm still on the roster, and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what happens this year. Yeah, I mean, that that's incredible. Just thinking about all the transitions you had to make and all the steps that you had to take on your journey. Um, I got a ton of questions related yeah, to it, but the yeah. first one I have is like, what kept you going? I mean, I have to assume that there was a lot of outside external pressure to like either step away or um, just give it up. But what ha really kept you going on this journey? Yeah, the, the biggest thing was my family, especially my yeah. wife, um, just kind of keeping me going and keeping saying, you know, never give up. I'm, I'm very lucky to have the support I've had between my wife, my parents, my brother, his wife, and my in-laws. Um, and, and even like people back home, they, uh, where I grew up, they, you know, they just want to see me achieve my dreams and continue to push. And 
I've gotten very lucky where I haven't had a step back and be like, all right, I need to provide for my family. Yeah. Um, I need to go, you know, sit behind the desk and make some money and provide. Like I've been able to continue to chase the dream and continue to chase getting better um, just to try to get to the big leagues and now try to cash in as much as I can to help you know, support my family. So I've been very lucky and blessed to be able to do that. But in reality, it's just kind of them pushing me and saying, hey, continue to get better, continue to get better. And it's just one of those things. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome to just have that supporting cast around you. Because a lot of times we talk about it on this podcast with other guests is that we're creatures of our environment. So the yes. people that we surround us ourselves with, that's ultimately what's going to push us. For sure. And yeah. in, in, in minor league baseball, not having a lot of money into mm -hmm. the thing. It's it's part of it where guys aren't as lucky. I've seen guys who are very very talented having to give the game up just because they can't they can't survive on twelve hundred dollars yeah. a month pre tax before rent before everything. You're almost breaking even when you're in the minor league levels in the last couple of years. Luckily now with the union and everything, we're we're getting the minor league levels to make some decent money, so guys don't have to you know struggle and be able to continue to chase the dream. So it is one good thing about unionizing the minor leagues. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. You think about those kind of things, it's like how much talent could just go out the window just because they just can't do it anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I have to ask too, because you've played at so many different places. Do you have a favorite spot that you've played at? Um, I would have to say Toronto just because the Rogers center yeah. um, with the dome opening and closing. Um, that was, that was one of the things just being able to sit, um, in the bullpen, we have like a little bleachers area mm -hmm. for the bullpen that sits above the fence. And just being able to see that, being around the crowd and that atmosphere. Uh, luckily enough, I was on the taxi squad for the wild card. I was in the dugout. So that was a lot of fun. But I will say, uh, Mexico City is a <laughs> lot of fun. They, they, have a, they have a big league stadium down there. The owner runs it really well. And the Mexico City fans and even all of Latin America baseball, just they, they love their sports. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're down nine, nothing in the ninth inning and you score a run, the place goes nuts. It's it's there's a band playing at all times. So that's why, I like when I play here in the States and some guys ask me about playing winter ball and I always say go. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a different atmosphere. And like I said, when in the minor leagues, it's about development and it's that first time they get to see if they haven't made it to the big leagues, what it is to about winning. It's yeah. all about winning. And that's that's the one nice thing about doing going there. Yeah. I mean, the fans are down there are absolutely incredible. I keep seeing videos of it. And I think the best experience I had as a fan was I was went to the World Baseball Classic and saw the Dominican Republic play. Um, I think it was Puerto Rico at the time. And the two yeah. fan bases were just absolutely insane. It yeah. felt like it was like a championship game. And this was like the semifinals. It wasn't right. even. <laughs> right. It's like a World yeah, Cup yeah. game. Like well, the World Cup's going on now and in, in, in sports in Latin America, they are all in all 100% of the time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, also, like, I have to ask, like, take us into your major league debut. I, that must have had an incredible <laughs> experience. But like, what was going through your mind during that time? Well, we actually, I actually got a phone call. Me and my wife came back from, uh, we were in Rochester. We were on our way back to Buffalo, got a phone call. We were about to do some laundry. All of a sudden they said, hey, you're meeting the team at the airport. And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> and they, they kind of said, hey, like, we don't know if you're going to be active or not. So it's just one of those things is like, get on the plane and go, see what happens. If yeah. you don't get activated, we'll see you when you, they send you back. So, so let's pack your stuff right away, get to the field, pack your stuff, get over to the airport, meet the team. And getting on the big league plane was was unreal. Like it's yeah. first class seats everywhere. So that was an experience. But then we got to Kansas City and we had a two hour rain delay. So everyone's <laughs> like, all right, you know, like bang the game. I end up getting activated. Like it was just one of those things is like, uh, are we gonna play? Or are we not gonna play? Um, so then we were we ended up playing the game and there's probably maybe ten thousand people there at most at the start of the game. And as the game goes, we're winning. I think we were winning 7-0, seven 7-1 nothing, seven one at the time. And they called down in the ninth inning and asked Romano if he because he hasn't he had a pitch in about a week. They said, Hey, do you want to get some work in? And his response was, Well, well if you want me to. <laughs> so they they called back down and said, Nope, we're gonna give it to Gage. So I said, All right. So I got on the mound, started warming up. 
went in the game and the clock struck midnight in Kansas City in Central Time. And at that point, there was maybe 50 <laughs> people in the stands. And I had, I think I had eight or nine of them just cheering for me. That's awesome. Um, but it was, it was amazing. And, and it was just one of those things is like you step on the mound and you're in a big stadium, but it's the same game. It didn't matter who I faced. And uh, it was just a, maybe a little bit better hitters, but it was just the mound 60 feet, six inches, just continue to go execute the game plan and get out and get three outs as fast as you can and then celebrate <laughs> afterwards. Cause that's, it's just, it was a fun thing to be a part of. And, but the, Real time that set in was I was running into the mound, get on the mound, throw my warm up pitches, and as I'm throwing my warm up pitches, the PA announcer goes, "Now making his major league debut," and that was like, "Oh, mm. this is real. Yeah, like, this is real now." So that was that was a lot of fun. That's awesome. I mean, I love your mindset too, going out there, kind of just focusing with your feet are. Don't change anything that you've done in the past, even though it's your major league debut. I mean, that's yeah. that's incredible to even have that mindset going yeah. into that. Yeah, uh, it was one of those things is I didn't want to throw ball one to the backstop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess now that you finished your your first pro season, our first season getting to pitch in the big leagues, what are some of your plans for the, this offseason or what have you been doing this offseason? And kind of what are some of your passions away from the game that you get to actually uh, also dive into during the offseason? Well, usually I get to play a lot of golf. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's more of this is like the first – um, off season, I didn't have to go play winter ball because it's usually in the minor leagues trying to make some extra cash, just go play winter ball and for a month, month and a half, maybe two and a half months, um, and just make some extra money and then roll that into spring training. Whereas now it was like, all right, you, you have an off season, and then it was like, oh, you have a bone spur, so now you got to get that taken out, yeah. And now I'm just kind of rehabbing that back, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, is it's it's part of the process and getting the bone spurs taken out. Hopefully everything goes back to normal and I can throw a little bit harder and more consistent velo than that I was before uh, the bone spur popped up. But uh, that's kind of really what I got planned for this off season, just kind of hang out, relax, and just kind of rehab that back. Um, as of now, like I said, I'm with the Jays. And if the Jays sign some guys and they end up ultimately getting rid of me and they need my roster spot, it, it's part of the business. And I understand yeah. that. And but right now I'm just trying to take it in stride and try to rehab as fast as I can and try to throw as hard as I can next year. Nice. That's awesome. Um, I always ask guys, too, do you have a go to restaurant that when you get back home for the offseason that you're like, got to go there? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's called a Stanley's Tavern. It's a little uh, mom and pop rib shop in uh, Wilmington, Delaware, and the ribs are phenomenal. I get the dry Memphis dry rub always whenever I come home. Always got to stop at Stanley's. I, I always feel like dry, I like dry rub better than the, yeah, the wet rub. I agree. I'm yeah. all about it. I mean, every yeah. time I have them, I'm like, mm, these are so much better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're less messy. There's more flavor, yep. I feel. Uh, the spices get cooked in a little bit more. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the dry rubs. Yeah. So the last question I ask all the guests, because a lot of times we want we want the fans to really enjoy the these interviews as well, but we also want to provide resources to future guys coming up into the minor leagues um, and as they kind of try to find their identity outside of the game, but also try to focus on baseball. Um, what would be that one piece of advice you have for guys who are maybe going through the same journey as you, like a middle round draft pick, trying to make that transition to the pros um, and then coming out of like a small school? Yeah, the biggest thing is just, just keep going. Keep grinding yeah. and... Uh... Always be open to change because when I got drafted, I was a starter throwing 86, 88 miles an hour, topping out 90, 91. Uh, I had a very long arm action. It was just kind of I was I was OK. Uh, I was pretty successful in the minor leagues, but I wasn't I didn't project to be the the, the major league starter. Honestly, yeah. uh, maybe a fifth starter, but not really a guy. Um, and during the COVID year, it was really when I was like, all right, how do I get better? So I was like, always like here. And mm -hmm. like, I got up to this point and it was like, all right, how do I get past this level and get to here? And I was like, well, the short arm action is kind of what's taking over baseball. I saw Giolito when we were in the minor leagues together and he had a longer arm. It was kind of erratic. Um, he did throw hard. He was like 95, 97. Um, and then all of a sudden I see him thrown with the White Sox in 19 and 20. And it was just like, this might be the way to go. Like the dude's yeah. carving. So I was just throwing a bullpen one day during COVID getting ready to either go play independent ball or go to Mexico. If we did have the season 
had my wife actually stand in the box versus me. And I was like, just perception wise, like I didn't have any of the, the scientific stuff. I didn't have track man, rap solo, yeah. no radar gun. It was just perception. Like, Hey, what looks harder? What has later action? Cause I didn't think I was going to increase velo like I did. So every pitch I threw fastball, curveball, cutter, change up every single pitch I threw her and the catcher both said it was the short arm action. Everything was better. Wild. I said, okay. So I go to independent ball, first pitch, 95, 94 miles an hour. I'm like, <laughs> I've never thrown this hard in my entire life. And I was just like, it's here to stay. So yeah. it's just one of those things is always be open to change. Oh, and just grind it out. And if you can make it work, continue to go. And that's really my biggest piece of advice is what a lot of younger guys ask me is like, how do you just keep going? Is this just be open to change and just keep going, just keep grinding if you can. If you can't, it's understandable. Because yeah. there's other things in life other than playing minor league baseball and chasing the dream. If, if you can do it, continue to do it as long as you can. And, and don't give it up because there's always a time that someone says, hey, you can't play the game anymore. But unless you believe that in your heart, don't stop. I love that. I love that. The, the motivation is just kind of keep going. Um, mm -hmm. Matt, this interview was amazing. We can't thank you enough for taking the yeah, time to join problem. us. Um, and we're wishing you the best of luck in 2023. I appreciate it.